What the folks, Tottrell here, and welcome back to Microsoft Flight Simulator. We're going to conclude the California Dreams bush trip today, which means we'll be all caught up with bush trips 100% through World Update 10. I assume you're watching this after Sim Update 10, but probably before the next World Update with more bush trips. So we should be all caught up video-wise and me actually doing them, I think. Maybe for a day. But anywho... Let's get this uh, recorded and off to you all. And let's complete this bush trip. It's a nice one. I enjoy it. But we got two legs left. Here we go. All right. Let's come down here. Repair refuel. And man, this has taken me so many weeks to record this bush trip. Because I was looking at the preview screen and I mentioned Catalina Island. I'm like, wow, that was like months ago I started this thing. Um, so i'm trying to see how far up to zoom it all let's go like this so frame rates right now the frame rates are terrible as we talk about quite often when we have these handmade airports there's this weird bug where when you're on the ground your frame rates tank but as soon as those wheels leave the ground your frame rates are back up in the 60s or 70s or whatever they're going to be so um it'll be fine as soon as we get off the ground here so where are we headed for this penultimate leg Penultimate, that word is not used very much in the United States, but in other English-speaking countries is used all the time. Alrighty, altitude. Um, does it say anything about altitude? I think we're pretty much just going to... Yeah, okay, there's Mont Diablo. But we'll go around that. Um, Twin Peaks. We'll go around those. So you don't really need to be that high because we're going to go around those peaks. So let's do... 2,500 feet. I think that'll be beautiful for sightseeing. We'll just use the heading bug to get us around the mountain and the peaks. So there we go. Flight director heading, altitude select. I mean, vertical speed. Altitude is set. Vertical speed will do 1,100 feet per minute. If I can get the cursor to stay where it belongs. There we go. Let's hop outside. We have plenty plenty of space. I don't think we need to turn around. Nope. Wow, these frame rates are horrible. But like I said, it's not the computer. It's a bug. As soon as these wheels leave the ground, it'll be fine. That's how it is. All right, where are we headed for this leg? California 35, Mount Diablo from Buchanan Field. Instead of heading to the southeast to Mount Diablo, which is at 3,800 feet above sea level, can be seen from up to 100 miles distant during clear days. We've talked about this before. It depends how high you are, how far you can see. So we'll do that, then we'll combine it with the San Francisco-Oakland Bay Bridge. The San Francisco-Oakland Bay Bridge, head to the city of Oakland, then the eastern shore of San Francisco Bay, continue to the San, on to San Francisco, Oakland Bay Bridge, which connects Oakland with San Francisco via Yerba Buena, Buena, Yerba Buena Island along Interstate 80. I've always wanted to grab that bridge, but I heard it can take like an hour or more to get across, just in normal traffic. So we'll go past Mount Diablo, we'll look for the Oakland Bay Bridge, and then actually this is all going to happen very quickly. So let's read about it now. Treasure Island, headed Treasure Island just north of Yerba Buena Island, which lies at the heart of San Francisco Bay, and offers incredible views of San Francisco skyline, notably the Transamerica Building, one of the most famous works of architecture history, which is, used to be my favorite building my entire childhood until, well collegehood when the internet came out you can research other buildings before you even when you had to look up tall buildings on the encyclopedia and learn about them i was obsessed with the transamerica building i don't know why maybe it's in a movie twin peaks from treasure island again yeah, instead of heading to the southwest flying real hard san francisco and all of its spectacular architecture old and new to twin peaks at 922 feet above sea level Twin Peaks are the second highest point in San Francisco and offer the most sweeping views of the entire city. And then Golden Gate Park, which we'll see the Golden Gate Bridge at the same time. And then after that is Marin Headlands. We're also going to be going by Alcatraz and stuff too, by the way. So Alcatraz is out here. They didn't mention that. Marin Headlands from the midpoint of the Golden Gate turn to the northwest to the heights of the Marin Heartlands, which provides them the most spectacular and sweeping views of the entire San Francisco Bay Area. And then... Land, San Rafael, following Route 101. So normally, if you haven't seen a bush trip video before, I'd be surprised because why would you start in the middle of a bush trip? But if you haven't, normally we'll read about a thing, see it, read about a thing, see it. But because this is all going to happen so very quickly, we just read about it all right now. Okay, so we're done reading, 
fact, I don't even know if we need to use navigation because they know where all this stuff is. I'm just looking for CA-35, which would be hard to find on the GPS, but we'll turn at the midpoint of the Golden Gate, we'll turn to the northwest. So we'll go at 289 degrees in the middle of the Golden Gate. How about that? Back to this right away. So we'll go 344. <laughs> 344 degrees, and we'll look for the um, airport. That's how we'll navigate. So we're going to fly through here. Do to do to do to do to do to do. Golden Gate Bridge is right here. There's Alcatraz, that little tiny dot. So we'll fly here over Alcatraz. Golden Gate will turn north. And then when we get here, we'll zoom in the GPS and look for our airport and land. That's our navigation for this leg. Okie dokie. We already talked about as long as the leg is going to take. So let's get going. Parking brake off. And broken toes, keeping me from ruddering the way I want to. So we're just going to go to the right and hope for the best. And um, that is really loud. And up we go, and boom, brake to stop the wheels, and boom, do you see how the frame rate suddenly got perfect? And there we go, flaps coming in, in fact, I'm just going to close this up, we don't need to look at that blinking light, because we know what we're doing. Alrighty, let's get some altitude here, and enjoy the views, the mountains, Twin Peaks, San Francisco, yada yada yada. You know the deal. We're going to hand fly out of here for a minute, though, before we turn loose the sightseeing. And um, I'm wondering what altitude we really need to be to clear this train. I don't know. Doesn't really matter. Let's do this in a little bit here. Um, let's go like that. There we go. We're going to follow this in right around the mountain. Around this. And bam. Just like that. Very, very, very simple. Alrighty, I think we're good. Um, I think 2,400 feet is still okay. Yeah, it is. Oh, we need to push for heading because we're just going to use our own navigation. Alright, autopilot is engaged. Let's hop all side together. Do we want to maybe go a little higher in altitude? Yeah. Maybe we do. We're higher than what they said it was supposed to be, but you know how that's been going lately. Well, let's go 3,000 for right now. Is that going to level us off? Yes, vertical speed. Whoops, vertical speed. Keep it the same. There we go. All right, now we'll look outside briefly together. And I read about all of those points of interest. I will make sure they're all in the sightseeing view, like that one, for example. There we go. There's one of them. And that could maybe be a screenshot. Would that work for a thumbnail? Let's try it. I don't know. Anywho, looking around, enjoying everything together. So, alrighty, loads of sightseeing without my voice for you. I'll make sure everything is in the views of the sightseeing, and I'll catch up with you again when it's time to land at San Rafael. And that's it. See you in a little bit.
All right, it's not showing up on here, but we're actually going to come together now for the rest of this little lake because we're almost there already. We are hauling. So there is the downtown San Francisco. There's Twin Peaks. There is the Transamerica building right there, the Pyramid building. Which, oh, I should do that in Minecraft. Duh, why haven't I done this building in Minecraft? Oh my gosh, I'm totally going to do this now in Minecraft. Totally. Don't know what I'm going to put in it, but I'm totally going to do it. Uh, all the wise, there's Alcatraz right there. Boom, boom, boom. Let's hop outside briefly. And there are the shipyards. I've never been to San Francisco. I've always wanted to go to San Francisco because of these super steep hills that don't look steep from the airplane. <laughs> but they are. I want to cycle. I want to take a bicycle up these hills. I don't know if I can anymore with my POTS, P-O-T-S. It's a heart condition thing. Blood pressure thing. But before that, I was so strong with hill training. I wanted to test myself out on these hills. Probably can't do it now, but some of the steepest roads in the world are in San Francisco. Um, and I really want to drive this Oakland Bay Bridge. And I want to stop on this island here. Um, but I just haven't been there. Um, so maybe someday. Golden Gate Bridge. Um... I've wanted to always go here, of course. I've wanted to cycle across that as well. Just haven't really been able to. You know, look, I haven't been there, so obviously you can't. We do need to make our turn right now, but I'm super interested in just looking at all the neighborhoods and everything first. So there we go. And there's the Golden Gate Bridge. And there's a park here. Um, there was a, if you look at Scott's, um, Tom Scott's YouTube channel he did a thing here with some people recording birds learning that birds have accents based on where they live and the noise around them so we're looking for CA25 or Charlie Alpha 20, 35 and I don't see it yet so let's turn off autopilot and let's just fly to the north I think they said 3 something um, 344 so we're just going to fly to the north until we find this airport while we look at the Golden Gate Bridge, which is back here. We can't quite see it, but we'll get there. Um, yeah, that's all I have to say about... Whoa, we better be careful on our throttle here. We don't overspeed. But that's all I have to say about San Francisco. I want to be there. I want to go there. I used to be obsessed with it when I was younger for some reason. But I have yet to make it. I don't know. Maybe someday that can be the next family vacation or something. So let's see. Let's head back inward until we can find our destination. So we we're supposed to turn over the Golden Gate, which was back there, and then go 344, which means we're a little bit to the west. So let's make up for it by going back towards the Golden Gate and then going 344 and see if we can find this airport um, for three minutes. I mean, it's a little bit of ways away, but the reason... It's hard to find is because it's a small airport so not on the GPS. Look at that. There is San Francisco. Riceroni and trolleys. Alright, so let's fly this for a minute and then let's keep zooming in until it pops in. Uh, maybe we don't need to zoom in that far. Is it up here? I bet that's it right there. That would be three minutes out. So let's head that direction. That'd be right there, right? That one right there, that little island thing. Is that going to be it just before the water? Let's plan on that being it. Or would it be the next water? Let's see. Is it going to say C at 25? What does it say? It says, or 35, I mean. And it does. Good, so now we know where we're going. I don't think it's that, though. I think it's further away than this. I think it's up here. What does it look like? I think it's paved, but barely. Yeah, there's some lines on there. Alrighty, cool. We know where we're going now, so let's just enjoy the scenery. We'll hand fly it in. Look at those neighborhoods. Wow, wow, wow. That's amazing. And then they work in San Francisco, probably. It takes forever to get there, but most likely. Alright, let's look for the airfield. It's out here somewhere.
Alright, it is really hard to sightsee while you hand fly. <laughs> you can't look at your cages. Sorry, right, airport. Oh, I think your airport's right here. I think that's it. If that's it, we're going to have to go around because we're way too close. Um, do you think that's it? Yeah, because there's the pavement there. Okay, and there's a road going in. Okay, so we're going to have to go around because we were so busy sightseeing. <laughs> we didn't really pay attention to where we were going. But that's okay. We have speed to lose, altitude to lose. We've got plenty of time. We got nothing but time. Which may or may not be true in real life, but here we go. Let's go runway heading like this. Or mostly runway heading. Then we'll know what we're aiming for when we turn around. There we go. Although we're never really going to lose sight of the airport anyway. But you get the idea, right? Let's not hit the hills on the way over. We'll do a nice downwind leg. Keep an eye back here. Let's do first set of flaps. There we go, it'll float. And as soon as this gets to be back, here we do a base. So we're going to have a very short base and final. So let's get down. Let's do full flap while we're turning. That's kind of weird, whatever. We go for the swampy deltas. And we'll come in for a landing. And where's the runway? There it is. Perfect. Look at that. Alrighty. Um, we're coming a little hot yet for this length of runway, but we do our reversers and everything, so I'm not terribly worried. And we'll bleed off speed right at the last moment here. And a little bit of crosswind. I'm not going to worry about it for this. Ready on the reversers. Let ground effects take over and gentle touchdown like that. Bam, reversers and brakes, flaps coming in. And we should be good to go. Let's look for that save icon. Reversers out. And what does it say? All right, five minutes longer than normal. That's what, that's normal for me to be too long, but here we go, final leg. All right, for the final time for a while, let's repair and refuel. And we'll zoom this out a little bit so we can see where we're going. And uh, come on, oh, right in between, whatever, good enough. Okay, so let's see, come down here. Now let's get the timer ready since we are gonna need it for this leg. And get that out, there we go. Anything about elevation for this final leg, CA-51, huh? Um, mm, nothing about elevation, but there are some hills here, though. So, let's go 4,000 feet until we know how high these hills are. Maybe 4,500 until we know how high they are. Let's do flight director. Come on. Heading bug. Vertical speed. Please, thank you. Knock that up 1,300 feet per minute. Like so. And one set of flaps. And we will back taxi to get out of here. Alrighty, what are we going to do? Bolinas Bay, after launching from San Rafael Airport, head to the southwest, passing just to the north of Mount Tamalpais, and directly over Alpine Lake to reach the Pacific Ocean at Bolinas Bay. So I'm assuming we're going right over this mountain right here. And then we'll probably get down altitude. Um, yeah, let's just do that much at this for this one. One thing at a time for this one. Alright, 208 degrees for three and a half minutes. 208 oh, 208 degrees. There we go. For three and a half minutes. Three and a half minutes. Alright, let's use this view to back taxi. Haven't used this in a while. Let's actually do something here. Let's... I want to take off in this direction, right? So let's um, just turn around like this and use this taxiway slash road thing we have going on here whatever this is and we'll take this to the other side oh come on of the runway come on now man we're gonna use this as a taxiway and then we'll take off and then we'll be in the air for the final time for not just this bush trip but for bush trips in general because I finally caught up this is the first time I'm truly caught up in bush trips because the last time I caught up I think I was caught up for less than a day. And then a bunch more came out. So we will finally be caught up with the trips for a significant amount of time. Hopefully I will um, be sick of racing so I can get my yoke back in place to do some free flights for you all. Because we've done nothing but bush trips for the past year and a half with two exceptions. 
and I say racing because after I record this, I'm setting up my racing stuff for the Hot Wheels expansion pack for Forza Horizon 5. Record a bunch of stuff with that. I'm sick of that. And then I'll hook up the um, hook up the flights and stuff again. Come on, let's do a turn and burn. Come on, there we go. All right, let's do this and then set autopilot and do some sightseeing. But first, let's get in the air. Here we go. My left toe still hurts really badly. All right, break to stop the wheels and then get some speed going. And flaps coming in. And we want this heading to fly over all this stuff. And once I'm confident we'll make it, I'll engage autopilot. I just want to make sure we're not going to run into anything such as that big mountain in front of us. Right? Made around that one. And we're headed for that one. It's supposed to be 208, right? I'm kind of pointing in the wrong direction here. You can see how much 2 degrees makes, though. Look at that. From 206 to 208. Big difference. Now we're 216, see? Now we got to come back. I just don't want to hit this hill. So I think I'm going to hand fly us up and over this hill. And then we'll engage autopilot in a minute here. But in the meantime, let's look out of the window. Nuts, I say. All right, we're climbing pretty steep, but we need to. So I think if I just autopilot to keep us... About 1600, I think we can engage it. And then I can let go. I'm going to keep an eye on the speed and nose down as I need to. I did start the timer. We are going to fly over this hill together. And then when the timer says what it's supposed to say, that's when we make our next adjustment. Um, but yeah, right now we're flying over the mountain. And then we're going to go to all over Alpine Lake to reach the bay. How cool is that? That's awesome. Whoa. Alrighty, there we go. There's your mountain, and the lake is right behind it. There's San Francisco in the far background. And then we're going to reach the ocean. So enjoy the views, and I'll see you in a moment. Alright, we're already here. We are ahead of schedule. I don't understand how, but we are. So let's reset the timer since we're ahead. Next order of business, 281. Then we'll read about it. I just want to make sure we're headed in that direction here. So there's 281. Let's look out the window. At the bay with the houses on the beach. Oh my gosh, to live in a place like that. How cool would that be? Wow. Anywho, Point Rise Lighthouse. Sight Point Rise to the northwest and fly just off the coast to Point Rise Lighthouse, one of the most important navigation aids on this part of the Pacific coast, as this is the windiest and foggiest section. So if we do this right and we go five and a half minutes. Oh, my thing is actually showing the right thing now. Look at that. Five and a half minutes, we should see a lighthouse. So I assume it's going to be right here, right? So once we get closer to that, I will join you again and we will look for a lighthouse. Although we're kind of high, so maybe we can come down now. Actually, now that I'm thinking it out loud, let's go down to my favorite 2,500 feet, which seems low, but in a lot of cases, it's actually not that bad. So I'm going to... I'm going to um, keep an eye on our speed here, give us some sightseeing. We're going to look for a lighthouse in just a moment.
Alright, so we're almost there, so let's hop outside. And you're ready to spot a lighthouse. We're a little bit far away yet, but that is okay. We can hop inside and enjoy these views while we wait. Nothing but beach. Look at that. Nothing but ocean and Minecraft clouds. Look at that. <laughs> Imagine what lives out there. Imagine what lives out there in the ocean. We know more about outer space than we do about the ocean. Maybe there's like half human type or like aquatic humans that live out there. I think we would have found them by now, but you never know. I do not see a lighthouse yet. Maybe it's on the other side. Oh, there it is. No. That, oh yeah, I think that might be it right there. I think the lighthouse rendered in before the terrain rendered in. Um, we should probably read about the next thing though. After the lighthouse, we're going to turn 12 degrees. We're going to Tamales Bay. Set a heading to the northeast flyover of the crashing surf of the coastline to reach a long narrow Tamales Bay, which is formed by the action of the San Andreas Fault, which underlies the bay. So we'll go to 12 degrees for four minutes or so as soon as we are done looking for a lighthouse. I don't think that's it. I think it's this under here. So let's um, hop outside, use this view we set up, and I don't think that's it. I mean, that could have been it, but I'm thinking it's up here, maybe. We will see in a moment. Well, I'm pretty sure that's it right there. I think I can zoom in. Can't I zoom in? I thought I could zoom in. That's weird. I used to zoom in. Maybe that's only inside. Yeah, that's definitely it right there. There's our lighthouse as things render. My navigation is so spot on, we're going right over it that we can't use the window. Because we're going right over it. Okay, there you go. You can stop the tape if you want to look more. Let's um, hop inside in 12 degrees, right? 12 degrees, and then we'll reset the timer. I just want to get us turned in here. 12, 12, 12. Maybe we can look out the window now and see it. No. Oh, maybe. There it is. Look at that. We did it. We spotted it. Reset this timer right here. Tamales Bay. 3 minutes, 41 seconds. Then after that, we'll go to Bodega Bay. So we'll combine those in the sightseeing. So we got one bay after another, all right? And then Badoga Head, which lies to the northern end of Badoga Bay, which is right next to the bay, right? And then Fort Ross. Follow the coast of Fort Ross, a former Russian settlement. All righty, so I'm gonna navigate, navigate us through here. And when we get to Fort Ross, we will reconvene. So enjoy the sightseeing of the water and rocks and beaches and see if you see anything interesting i'll see if i see anything interesting and i will see you in a couple minutes
So somewhere out here is a fort. I think it's this thing. I think. We will find out in just a moment when we get there, but otherwise, beautiful view so far. We are following the navigation, so we are the distance they want us to be from the coast. From the coast. So I'm thinking that's our fort. Hopefully it'll render in soon. Um, well, maybe it's up here, but pretty confident that's it. So, anywho, let's hope that we're on the right track. In the meantime, we'll enjoy the beautiful reflections of the mountains on the water. And, um, yeah, let's see. Keep your eyes peeled. I don't see a fort in the area. Unless it's inland a little bit, but it's supposed to be right in here. This is the Fort State Park. So maybe it's like a little tiny building like this. Maybe that's it right there, but we're just a little bit too far away. I'm thinking, no, wait, you can zoom. That's right. If you're in the cockpit, you can zoom. Um, no, I don't see anything there. Unless it's actually nothing's rendered because they're so far away. So it could certainly be this area. It's just not rendered in. But I don't see anything else along this coastline that we've gone the appropriate distance and time. So let's just restart the timer. In fact, we're beyond it now. So anyway, somewhere in there, I don't know. Fort Ross, let's go 304. 304? Oh my. If I go 304, we're going to go way out to sea. Um, so let's not go out to sea. Let's stay where we are. Um, we're at the cruise Radadendron State National Reserve. Okay, follow the coast. The coastline continues to get more rugged along the stretch, which lies in Sonoma County. Enjoy the breathtaking, dreamy views and set down at the Sea Ranch Airport, just inland of the village of the Sea Ranch. And that's 313 degrees. We're 312 right now, so about five minutes out or so, we should see our airport, CA-51. So I guess now we're just going to play the game of use a GPS until we find CA-51. I'm, whoop, can I get her speed? Oh, that's what happened. My throttles were way back because when I descended and it brought the throttles back, I didn't put them forward again. So we've been going way, way, way too slowly. Therefore, our timing was off. Okay, that makes sense why we're way out to sea. So... I will keep looking for the, um, well, that might be it right there. Um, Charlie Alpha 51. But I'll keep looking for stuff, but I think that's your airport right there. Probably. Um, yes, it is. Okay, so we know where we're going now, so enjoy another minute of sightseeing, and we will um, reconvene in just a moment to land this thing. Alright, it's time to turn off autopilot and try to find this airport here. I think it's pretty much right below us. So let's get lined up here so that we can have a better view of it. And we'll fly over this park or whatever. And what does the final runway look like? Um, it's paved. But in the trees a little bit. Could be up here. Could be your most challenging runway yet. It didn't say that we're concluding the bush trip in the nav log, though, but I'm pretty confident this is the last leg. The final leg. There we go. Um, I think that's going to be it up there. I could be wrong. I kind of hope I'm wrong, because that looks kind of scary. But that's what we're aiming for. If we have to come from the other way, we can. Let's do first set of flaps, just because we've slowed down now. And let's do our final look outside. Oh my gosh, that's gorgeous. Look at that. Well, be up down there the road and everything. We'll look out that way. Look at that rugged rocky shoreline. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's the airport. So let's clear these trees. 
and then figure out how to land there without hitting a tree as we learned in the previous bush trip um, the trees count as a crash and we struggled with that but hopefully this will be okay um, again we do not have to land at the tip of the runway we can land very long we have reversers we have good brakes um, so I don't need to aim for the very tip I just get nervous about overshooting the runway Alrighty, do not get distracted by that beautiful river. <laughs> Just fly the airplane in. And, uh, yeah, uh, we'll try and land you from this side. Um, but I have a feeling the other side would be much better. But we're going to try it. We're going to ride the tree line. We're not going to clip the trees. Because I don't want to redo the leg. But we are coming in really hot, though. So I think we're going to do something that never happens. And we're going to do a go-around. I think. Haven't decided. Well, I should have decided by now. No, I don't know. Maybe we'll try it. Maybe we'll go for it. Just don't clip those trees with your wheels. Oh, yeah. We're going to have to do a go-around. There's no way we're going to make that at this speed. No way. No way are we going to make this. Nope. Not going to make it. Nope. But we're going to try it. Reversers engaged. Right. Nope, inverses did not engage. Now they did. We made it. Flaps coming in. See? Cool. We did it. With plenty of runway to spare. Holy moly, this was supposed to be four hours and one minute. Took me 50% again and then some. Good grief. <laughs> what took so long? Anywho, that's it. We're all caught up on bush trips at the time of this recording and at the time of this viewing, we should be caught up as well. So I'm going to do a whole bunch of Forza stuff. I don't know if I'm going to record the Forza because I've never had more than seven views on the Forza video. So maybe you'll see Forza videos. Maybe you won't. Maybe you've already seen them. I don't know. But I'll be back for more flying soon. Like and subscribe so you know when the next Flight Simulator video drops. And I'll see you then.